I was in darkness, but I took three steps and found myself in paradise. The first step was a good thought, the second a good word, and the third a good deed. You, dear viewer, are probably wondering about some of the mechanics of the negotiation between Canute and Thorfinn and about their philosophical standpoints. We shall discuss them promptly, but let's set the stage first. King Canute and Thorfinn meet at peace talks near the king's camp. But before that happens, there is a prerequisite that had been fulfilled. Thorfinn was a renowned warrior and a bodyguard of Canute, so that helped Thorfinn demand an audience with him. Otherwise, no slave would be granted such a wish. Even then, Canute heard the name of Thorfinn, son of Thors, and didn't consider the meeting to be necessary. In that case, Thorfinn had a difficult task to find a way to get allowed through. A bet. It was a good opportunity. Thorfinn thought instantly. Historical accounts, although limited, point to the fact that Vikings really liked to gamble and place bets when it came to wrestling and horse racing. Thorfinn knew their preference for competition well. Thus, he bet on himself that he would survive the limit of 100 punches and would then be granted his wish. Men all gathered in a circle. Such a smallish guy wouldn't stand a chance against the big viking in front of him. Many bets were placed around 10 punches, knockout. Most were under 20. After 100 punches, Thorfinn still stood. He made it clear that there is no point in fighting and spilling blood. They didn't even know each other. The actual dispute was between Canute and Kettle and they should just play Hnefathafel to resolve it. Wolf, the trusted advisor of Canute, really liked the brave and strong qualities of the young man. Even his ideology aligned with that of the king. Thorfinn was allowed in because of strength of character. Even though he didn't use violence, he achieved victory in the end. One that people of the kind of Jesus and Buddha of wisdom and resilience. It is foolish to believe that the sea will obey you. Both adversaries had changed in the four year span before meeting each other again. Ironically, Thorfinn the relentless killer had turned into a pacifist and the timid and cowardly Prince Canute had turned into an iron-fisted and powerful king who was on a path to peace through violence. Although both had respect for each other, Thorfinn for the king of all Vikings and Knut for Thorfinn Karl Selfni, which means a great man, they didn't move from their positions for a while. Thorfinn asked Knut to leave the farm alone, but Knut refused. The son of Thors then asks, if Canute still wants to build a paradise on earth. King Canute states that he still wants to achieve that. He proceeds to display his power by stopping the oncoming tides, but in vain. This story is a historical legend of Canute the Great, who was admired for his ability to rule and think, so he purposefully placed a camp around the sea and showed humility to his advisors by not being able to control the sea. Who then was more powerful than him? It is God. Though humans cannot live peacefully under God's rule, Canute states, humans seem to harbor much evil and sin inside of them, and especially the warmongering Vikings. There shall not be any paradise, lest Canute saves those in most need, namely the Vikings. It is a parallel to Satan who rebelled against God and assembles an army against him in John Milton's Paradise Lost. Satan states, 
Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Canute reigns in the hell of the battlefield, yet doesn't do it out of pleasure, but wants to achieve an ultimate goal of peace through an utilitarian approach, meaning if the consequences of your actions bring good to most people, then your actions are morally good. That means that it doesn't matter who you kill or lie to, if in the end most people are happy and well because of it. Aina quickly disagrees by showing a lot of emotion and empathy for the victims. As a farmer, he knows the hard work of farming and the immense pain of losing it all. Thus the three argumentative forms of persuasion become clear in this discussion. Logos, ethos and pathos, which were introduced by Aristotle. Logos being Thorfinn, who uses logic to persuade during the peace talks. Pathos being Aina, who is very emotional and accentuates the pain and suffering that Knut's actions cause. Ethos being Knut, who persuades through credibility and ethical appeal by being a wise king with a grand goal for humanity. Still, they don't come to an agreement. No one quite wants to leave their ground. A rule in negotiation is that if you can't leave a negotiation, you can't actually negotiate. At this point, Thorfinn decides to leave the meeting. Thorfinn's new vision for peace entails no fighting, and rather running away. Far away from the king's rule to a distant land, Knut is perplexed at the result of the meeting. He finds it so foolish and uneventful, yet so intellectually stimulating, that he must laugh. Knut truly realizes how much he admires the once Viking Thorfinn. He would have been one to save in the past, but not anymore. So in the end, it seems that they both hold a similar ideal. Peaceful life for humanity. That connects them in such a strong way that they have good enough affinity to come to a satisfactory closure. It turns out that Thorfinn and Knut are not opposing forces, but actually complementary ones. Whoever doesn't like the rule of Knut can live with Thorfinn and vice versa. Thorfinn even challenges the king to not slack off and make Thorfinn's job harder. In the end, both parties come to an agreement. It is the first remarkable non-violent battle of Thorfinn, peace talks, and against a king nonetheless. Knut leaves the farm and adjusts his armies so that he needn't plunder any more farms. And Thorfinn departs on a journey of a true warrior, a journey of a philosopher who talks and persuades in the name of good. Power, violence, reputation and wisdom. I cannot teach anybody anything. I can only make them think, Socrates says. No one was particularly right in the peace talks, but those men came to a conclusion. As the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, one must be able to discuss and ask. Surely enough. After discussing the different points of views, parties can come to a satisfactory agreement. A true battle is one where people actually discuss with each other and agree to a solution of a problem. And that, dear viewer, is what Thorfinn Karl Selfny is after. A philosophical journey of physical and mental nature in order to find peace amongst people. As for Knut the Great, he would be remembered as a wise and just ruler. Without man and his potential for moral progress, the whole of reality would be a mere wilderness, a thing in vain and have no final purpose. <laughs>